It's important to note that not all fiscal policy tools affect aggregate demand equally. Spending tools are more effective in increasing aggregate demand. Tax reductions are somewhat less effective due to the marginal propensity to consume effect. The MPC is the proportion that an individual or business spends for every additional dollar of disposable income. For example, if the government reduces tax collections by $100 million and the MPC is 80%, the increase of consumption in the economy goes up by $80 million. The remaining $20 million goes to savings. In contrast, when the government spends $100 million on goods and services, the entire $100 million goes into the economy. In most economies, different segments of the population have different marginal propensity to consume. The low income may likely have a higher MPC as they tend to spend a larger proportion of income on consumption. As such, the government may get better results by focusing the tax cuts on the low income. Another important concept to understand is that of the fiscal multiplier. When the government spends 100 million, the net effect on aggregate demand is multiplied by this factor. To understand this, let's follow where the money goes. When the government spends $100 million in the economy, this amount goes to companies and individuals who provided the goods and services. If the tax rate is 25%, the net increase in disposable income to them is $75 million. With an MPC of 80%, these recipients will spend $60 million on other goods and services in the economy. This cycle continues until the effect reaches a limit. So as you can see, the total amount of spending in the economy extends beyond just the $100 million that the government put in. The fiscal multiplier can be calculated using this formula. So for this economy, the fiscal multiplier is 2.5. This means that the additional $100 million the government spent can potentially result in a $250 million increase in aggregate demand. Now let's say that the government wishes to maintain its current budget. So the $100 million increased spending has to be balanced by a corresponding $100 million increase in revenue from taxes. You may be wondering, wouldn't this fully cancel out the effect of the expansionary fiscal policy? Not so if we again consider the marginal propensity to consume. When the disposable income of the economy falls by $100 million, the actual decrease in spending is actually just $80 million. If we multiply this by the fiscal multiplier, the decrease in aggregate demand is $200 million. So we learn that even though the fiscal budget remains unchanged, the net change in aggregate demand is positive $50 million. We can say that the balanced budget multiplier is positive in this case. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.